That's probably a character thing. That's not a slip up. Maybe you read this in, in response to conviction. This person is deceived into thinking their religion will save them, but really only Christ can. And this may seem like rudimentary, simple Christianity, but the reality is this is far more prevalent than what you think. Doing religious things as a means to salvation was a big problem in Jesus' day, and it's still a big problem today. The devil has the same tricks. He just wraps it in different wrapping paper for each generation. Let me give you an example. People say they look at their lives. They have some level of conviction for how it's going. Maybe my kids are out of control or... (coughs) I have a habit I want out of my life, or I just feel icky about these sort of things. What is their response normally? I need to get back to church. That'll fix it. I need to get back to church. I need to get my kids in church. I need to be more disciplined. I see this all the time. If a person thinks that just coming to church without getting on their knees and fully submitting their life back to Christ is going to fix them. It won't last. It'll happen in short bursts. The person will be dedicated forever, period of time that they think is, uh, that, that they can generate enough willpower. It's usually two, three weeks. The strong ones make it two or three months. But what ends up happening is a few days to weeks later, their life looks exactly the same and it's, it's, everything's back to normal. Why? Because in their conviction over their moral condition, which by the way is not a bad thing, oftentimes that's the Holy Spirit convicting them, trying to draw them back to God through Jesus Christ. The problem was though that in their conviction, they turned to themselves and their religious practices instead of to Christ. They said, my problem is I need to get back to church. And while, yes, at church you can hear the gospel proclaimed, the real thing that you need to do is get on your knees and submit to the Lord. Why? Why do people do this? Why do people say, well, my life's a mess. My kids are a mess. I just need to get back to church. Well, it's easier. A person that feels they can fix their moral condition by doing a religious to-do list is deceived It's also the easy road. Because if I can just do a list of religious things to fix me and my problems in my life, that's easy. I do to-do lists all the time. I wake up in the morning and I have to-do lists. This is just another to-do list. But you know what it means? A religious to-do list means you're still in control. You still call the shots and you still get to be God. The road to true transformation in Christ requires harder things. It requires self-denial. It requires repentance of sin. And what repentance is, is not just, I'm so sorry, God, I screwed up again. It's walking away. Changing your attitude and your mindset about sin. Confession of sin before the Lord. You actually have to admit what you've done. An absolute total commitment. That's a lot different than just somehow managing to get yourself out of bed on Sunday morning and make your way to church. It's a lot more difficult. It requires you to lay yourself down and pick up Christ and and allow him to reign supreme. One will be lasting. One saves. The other one just deceives a person. They think they're saved, but they're still condemned because they're trying to save themselves by religious actions. It's just like the rich young ruler. The rich young ruler came to Christ. He was firm uh, in himself because he had followed all the commandments. He says, what is the way by which I may attain the kingdom of heaven? How can I partake in the kingdom of heaven? Basically, I don't want to go to hell. There's a lot of people walking in churches. I just don't want to go to hell. How must I attain the kingdom of heaven? Jesus says, follow the Ten Commandments. Oh, I've been doing that since I was a kid. Jesus knows that's not true. And so then he, what he does next, very wisely, is he challenges this young man's God. And he said, if you really want to follow me, you'll sell all your possessions and give them to the poor, and then you'll follow me. In other words, you can, follow, you can do all your religious stuff, but at the end of the day, money is still your God. And until you lay that God down, you'll never make me, you'll never make me your God. Because you cannot serve both God and money. And what did the young man do? He walked away sad because he had many things. 
It was easy. He was like, sign me up. Since I was a little boy, I've been going to church. I've been sitting in the synagogue, been listening to the preacher, been taking notes. I've been going to Sunday school class. I've been doing all the things. I've been doing it, Jesus. Isn't that enough? No, because your God is money. And until you lay that down, you'll never make me God. And the man walked away. Why? Because it was harder because he had to deny himself. Religion doesn't save. Man, religious things are great done in the context and in the name of Jesus with a transformed heart. But man, it doesn't save. It leaves us still in control. This is repeated in our culture over and over and over again. 